Transcribed. King Arthur had his shining nights. Cleopatra had her day. But you, you lucky people, you, you've got Harris and RCA. RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. <laughs> Enjoyment here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, transcribed, written by Ed James and Phil Shukin, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, John Hubbard, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Scharf and his music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. Tonight's little epic is entitled The Courtship of Elliot Lewis, or A Drummer Gets Stuck with Any Old Girl, But a Guitarist Can Take His Pick. <laughs> First, however, here's a word from RCA Victor. Did you see my little Margie, the Goldbergs, or Groucho Marx on television last week? Well, 80 million Americans were able to. Think of it. Television enables every other American to enjoy top-flight shows like Dragnet, Foreign Intrigue, and your show of shows. Every other American can have a box seat in his living room at a big-time sports events, title fights, college football, hockey. And the children can share in the fun of wonderful shows like Howdy Doody and Roy Rogers. So if your family's missing all the wonders of television... Buy him a new RCA Victor receiver. Thanks to RCA Victor's remarkable rotomatic tuning, one click of one knob brings in the station with virtually no fine adjustments. Thanks to RCA Victor's famous magic monitor circuit system, you get television's clearest, strongest pictures. And yet, big screen RCA Victor television is priced as low as $189.95. See your dealer tomorrow. Chances are he can make immediate delivery of your RCA Victor so you can start to enjoy television at once. And remember, a factory service contract for expert installation and maintenance is available to RCA Victor television owners in every principal TV area. Inquire about an RCA Victor factory service contract. Another reason why every year, more people buy RCA Victor than any other television. stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Faye and Bill Harris. <laughs> Vacations, like everything else, must come to an end. Once again, it's breakfast time in the Harris household, and we find the Harrises, Alice and Phil, in vastly different moods. Alice is grumbling over a red-hot stove... But Phil is smiling and gay as he trips lightly down the stairs. A smile on his lips and a song in his boyish heart. Boyish. (laughs) (laughs) Pretend you're normal when you ain't. So far my band's had no complaint. Just call for Harris if you're all alone and find you on... Some cocktails for two. <laughs> I'm running all the way. Oh, bloody feet. Oh. Hi, Alice, honey. Hi. Boy, that was some vacation we had, wasn't it? Vacation? I spent three months as a combination bellhop and bottle opener for you and that Elliot Lewis. <laughs> some vacation. Oh, now, wait a minute, honey. It wasn't that bad. I remember one day we didn't see Elliot for almost a whole hour. Sure. But we had to hide in a cave. <laughs> Look, just for, forget about Elliot, honey. Don't worry about him. Hey, what do you got for breakfast? Well, you have your choice between three-minute eggshells and some southern fried coffee grounds. Nice, that sounds... <laughs> fried coffee grounds? That's all that's left, Clyde. Elliot got here first. <laughs> but where's the lovable locust now? <laughs> in the fruit bowl. Diving for pears. <laughs> well, where's the paper, honey? Elliot ate it. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Alice. That's silly. Oh, this is getting serious, Phil. We've got to get rid of him. Look, Alice, I can't throw Elliot out into the street like an old arrangement of tiger rag. <laughs> He's my pal, and nobody's going to throw him out. All right. Then you pay for the food he eats. (laughs) 
You mean out of my allowance? Out of your allowance. That deadbeat's gotta go. <laughs> Why don't he dig up his own meal ticket like I did? <gasps> Honey, that's it. Let's find a wife for Elliot. Oh, wife, honey. How crazy can you get? Who's going to stand for a guy with baggy pants and a wrinkled shirt and a three-day growth of beard and a... Hey, you know, he'd make a good husband. <laughs> That's it. Okay, baby, I'll call no, him. No, 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 you don't have to. I'll just light the stove. Hi, Alice, what's cooking? Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> Oh, hi, Curly. You got up, huh? No, but I ought to be up any minute now. <laughs> so, why don't you and Elliot have a nice talk while I fix some more breakfast, huh? Yeah, honey, we'll do that. Come on, Elliot, sit down. We'll have a nice talk, okay? Okay. What about girls? <laughs> That's a nice thing to talk about. <laughs> well... Go ahead. You start. <laughs> oh. All right. Ain't that Alice a living doll? Don't she look pretty bending over that stove? Yeah. What a stove. <laughs> hey, Elliot, wouldn't you like to have somebody cooking breakfast for you every morning? I got somebody. You have? Sure. Alice. <laughs> I mean, somebody else, you dope. What are you trying to do, Curly? Get rid of Alice? Of course not. <laughs> So what's the pitch? Look, Elliot, I'm trying to tell you, living the kind of life you do is no good. It ain't? No, it's awful. You get up anytime you feel like it. You go to bed anytime you feel like it. If you want to go out with a babe, you go. You got no worries, no responsibilities, no... What's the matter, Curly? How'd you ever get into a mess like that? <laughs> Just lucky, I guess. Now, where was I? What was I saying? I ought to get married. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look, just think of it, Elliot. A little house all your own, your own fireplace, your own television set with a built-in bar. And then you come home at night and there's somebody waiting for you. Arms outstretched, lips outstretched. What am I marrying? Are you bangy? <laughs> Elliot, will you please shut up? I'm sorry, girl. Go ahead. Okay. Now, don't forget, Elliot. You and your wife won't always be two. One day they'll be the patter of little feet. No bodies, huh? <laughs> That's right, no bodies, just feet. I'm trying to tell you, Elliot, you sit down every morning with the sun shining in the window and, and your wonderful family gathered all around you. There's a feeling of peace and contentment. Everything's quiet. and calm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Alice, it's hopeless. Good morning, everyone. Oh, good morning, Willie. Well, if it isn't Mrs. Faye's revenge. <laughs> <laughs> good morning, Elliot and Philip. Wonderful day, isn't it? I liked it. <laughs> Until you came pussyfooting in. Oh, Phil. Sneaks up and back of you like Indian underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Philip. Never mind, William. Here's your breakfast. No, breakfast today, pet. Just sign these checks and I'll get along to the office. Why does she have to sign the checks before breakfast? Well, there are just a few for the gas and the phone and your allowance. Go ahead, honey. You better sign them checks. He's going to be Give me a pen. Hey, Curly. You mean Alice signs the check for your allowance? Yeah. I don't mind, except when Willie takes them off her income tax as a bad debt. <laughs> <laughs> that burns me up. Alice pays the bills and gives you an allowance, too, huh? The only reason we use Alice's money is to air out the vault. <laughs> it keeps the big bills from mill doing. <laughs> an allowance? What do you know? Oh, that's fine, Alice. Thank you very much. Well, you're welcome, Willie. A real live allowance. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, dear. Hey, wait a second, Elliot. Listen to this. 
I didn't hear nothing. That's what I mean. He goes out like that every time, the thing. <laughs> hey, you know, Curly, I've been thinking about what you said, you know, about peace and quiet and the rest of that stuff. I sure have been missing a lot, ain't I? See what I told you, Alice? I told you I'd sell him. Okay, Elliot, now all we got to do is to dig you up a wife. What do you got in mind? Well, she ought to be a girl. <laughs> I'm with you a hundred proof. Percent. <laughs> a girl. Any particular kind? I see a girl, Curly... You know what I mean? A real feminine type of girl with a checkbook. <laughs> oh, Phil, this is ridiculous. Anybody home? I've brought the groceries. You can't just marry a checkbook. Why not? Curly did. I didn't either. And you quit saying stuff like that or say, help me, I'm going to slug you. Phil! I'll testify against him, Miss Faye. I see the whole thing. You pleaded and pleaded, but he only laughed. Yeah. And threw your <laughs> quivering young buddy into the cedar closet. Cut it out now, will you? What are you doing here so early anyway? You ain't supposed to deliver them groceries for another hour. Oh, I'm taking the afternoon off. Me rich aunt is coming to town. And boy, is she loaded. <laughs> Curly, I'm way ahead of you. <laughs> Hey, Julius, buddy, when you say your aunt is loaded, are you referring to her financial or liquid condition? <laughs> Both. She owns a brewery. A brewery and money? Bingo! <laughs> hey, Ellie. Man, this is the greatest parlay of all times of food. <laughs> of little feet running through the mash barrel. <laughs> Checkbooks floating in bourbon. <laughs> Annuities over the rocks. <laughs> what are Jekyll and Hyde talking about, Miss Faye? Oh, uh, <laughs> nothing, Julius. Say, how would you and your aunt like to have dinner with us tonight, huh? Miss Faye! You mean you'd invite poor, little, insignificant meat to dinner? And bring the brewery. Huh? <laughs> I mean, your aunt. I'll be sitting at the same table with lovely, adorable Miss Faye. Yeah, yeah. I'll be drinking soup that her precious lips puckered to cool off. Yeah, Julius. <laughs> I'll be eating a souffle she's souffle just for me. <laughs> down, Rob. Get down now. What have I done to deserve this? What have I done? <laughs> well, that takes care of that She'll be here for dinner, Elliot Yeah, but what are we do until dinner? That's easy, we'll play an RCA Victor record You mean until tonight? Look, Elliot, when RCA Victor makes a 45 extended play record They don't fool around <laughs> They really extend it I'll show you Bye-bye, babe, bye-bye Sorry we must fly to the Bye, 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 baby Remember you're my baby When they give you the eye And just to show that I care I will write and declare That I'm on the loose But I'll stay on the square I'll be lonely But even though I'm lonely There'll be no other guy Though I'll be gone for a while I know that I'll be smiling With my baby by and by Bye bye, my little baby Bye bye, bye 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 bye, baby Remember you're my baby When they give you Although I know that you can, won't you write and declare that though on the loose, you are still on the square. I'll be lonely, but send that rainbow to me, then my shadows will fly. Though I'll be gone for a while. Here for dinner. 
dinner. Oh, Phil. Phil, will you take care of Julius's aunt? Like how, honey? <laughs> like let her in. Oh, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Elliot. We gotta let the brewmaster in. Where till I get a chair and a whip? Elliot, she ain't gonna be that bad. She's Julius's aunt, ain't she? So what? Now, Elliot, will you please put on the whip? But Curly. The chair will be enough. Well, okay, if you say so. Besides, there's gonna be two of us and only one of her. How do you know? I'm guessing. <laughs> now, go ahead, open the door. Hey, Curly. Open the door, Elliot. Curly. My whole life is flashing before my eyes. Well, when you get to the part that where your arm is long enough, open the door. <laughs> but Curly... Move over, will you? I'll open the door myself. Okay. Go ahead, Curly. I'm ready to meet my fate. Good evening. I'm... Yay! <laughs> Hello, boys. I'm Julius's aunt. You can close the door now. I'm in. Close the door, Curly. She might get out. <laughs> wow. Sure, a nice night for closing them doors. <laughs> It's a, a beautiful night. Gorgeous. <laughs> What's your friend doing with a chair? <laughs> uh, he's, uh, he's, oh, he always carries a chair around like that. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, I, 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 uh, uh... <laughs> Would you like to sit down, Julius? Is that... <laughs> you can call me Clara. Gee, that's a beautiful name. Clara. I used to know a Clara. Only she was a cigar. <laughs> and she didn't have a wrapper like yours. <laughs> Quite a card, ain't he, Claire? Hey, by the way, where's Julius? Didn't he come? Oh, yes. He's, uh, parking the truck. Parking the truck, huh? Well, we'd better go out and see him, huh, Elliot? We don't want to see that little creep boy. Will you stop? <laughs> don't pay no attention to him, Claire. Look, honey, why don't you go into the living room and make yourself comfortable, and me and Elliot have got some business with Julius, huh? Come on, uh, lover. Okay, if you say so. And don't go... Too far, boys. I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> we'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Bye, Clara. Hey, Curly. Huh? I can't believe it. <laughs> Money and a brewery and what a built. <laughs> What about Julius? I like Clara's built better. No. 
<laughs> oh, Elliot, listen to me. Don't you realize now, if we don't keep Julius out of here, he's liable to queer the whole deal. What do we do, Curly? Come on. Right. You know, I didn't think he'd fit in the mailbox. <laughs> oh, sure. You put him in sideways. Huh? <laughs> hey. Hmm? You better come on now. Now we got the business. Let's get going. Where? Are you kidding? No. Where? Where? Clara. The body. Your little bride. She's sitting in the living room. Now, come on. Just let me do the talking. Just lay there. Sure. Um. Hey, Clara. How's every little thing? You have a charming place, Mr. Harris. Just charming. Place? You call this a place? This ain't nothing. You ought to see Elliot's dive at the dump. I mean, <laughs> where Elliot lives. Right, Elliot? Right. He's got a place that's really a place, Clara. Hot and cold running doorknobs, wall-to-wall <laughs> floors, and on a clear day, Catalina can see him. <laughs> right? Right. Clara? Yes, Elliot? Let's next. Wait a minute. <laughs> Elliot, come over here a minute, will you? I want to talk to you. Excuse us just a minute, will you, Clara? What's the matter, you nuts? You want to queer everything? Why? What did I do? You can't jump at these things. You got to lead up to them kind of gradual. That's just what I did. Well, go slower. <laughs> Talk about something else first. Okay. Clara? Yes, Elliot? What do you think of the Brooklyn Dodgers? <laughs> oh, I think they're wonderful. What's next? Elliot! Still too fast? Certainly it's too fast. You know something, Clara? You got... What's the matter with you guys? You're crazy or something? Hey, wait a minute. Didn't you ever hear of doors? Who needs doors? They stuck me in a mailbox, and now I gotta use doors yet. Wait a minute, look. You wanna know how I got out? No, I don't wanna know how you got out. Well, I'm gonna tell you how I got out. No stamps. <laughs> Clara, will you excuse us for just a minute, please? We're going to tell me father what you've done. Just wait. You know what I'm going to tell me father? He'll have you torn in jail for the rest of your life. That's what I'm going to tell me father. Come on, Elliot. Let's get him out of here. Come what on. do you want to do? Stuff me innocent little body in a truck? Your axe murderers, you. Elliot, take care of him, will you? Your fiends and fiends clubbing you. You're so rude today you ever laid eyes on me. That's what you're so rude. <laughs> I got him, Curly. You're so rude today you ever laid a finger. Okay, take your hand off his mouth, Elliot. Okay. I'll be a lily white body, and when I tell a DA what you do, let him talk, Elliot. Okay. He'll have you electrocuted for life. Are you finished? Bobby is. Now I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Julius, you got us all wrong. We want to be your friends. Yeah, like a cat wants to be friends with a mouse. Keep still, you little rat. Elliot, please. Oh, sure. He wants to be my friend. Listen to him. He wants to be more than your friend, kid. He wants to be your uncle. He wants to be my uncle? Him? What's the matter with that? He's in love, Julius. He worships the very hops your aunt walks on. <laughs> and he'll make her a good husband, wouldn't you, Elliot? I would devote my entire allowance to making her happy. Oh, I see. Well, maybe I was wrong. There you are, Elliot. Julius is a good kid at heart. Yeah. Maybe we can make a deal. 
How about 50-50? 50-50? Julius, do you mean to say you'd take 50% of your Uncle Elliot's allowance? Wouldn't you? <laughs> you know, when you get right down to it, Elliot, it ain't a bad deal. <laughs> Well, okay, Curly, if you say so. Now, how's about a small retainer? Do I get it or do I go in and squeal to me Aunt Clara like the dirty little rat that I am? <laughs> Julius, we'll be relatives, you and I. Would you sully that kinship by this low display of avarice, this mean attempt at extortion? I'll take your gold elf's toot and your fountain pen. <laughs> Julius, how can you be so mean? I take shots. <laughs> Give him the elk's tooth, Elliot. But it was my mother. She don't need it. Let her gum her way. <laughs> okay. Here, you little crumb. Okay, Elliot, get going. Clara's waiting. Hey, I'm going to sweep her off her feet. I'll make that John Alden character look like a bum. Good luck. <laughs> oh, Harris, you're a doll. A living doll. <laughs> What's so funny, Mr. Harris? Hey, Julius. You got to hand it to me. I put it over like a dream. Oh, Harris, you're a genius. A living genius. Hey, Mr. Harris, you know how Aunt Claire is me aunt? She's married to me father's brother. <laughs> oh, Harris, you're a dead duck. Oh. <laughs> and Phil will be back in just a moment. Lady, are you caught in the kitchen traffic jam when you serve a big meal? Must you choose between cold biscuits and a cold roast? Well, you know, the new RCA Estate range solves your problem of getting everything at once. You can now serve everything. Meat, biscuits, vegetables, sauces, coffee, steaming hot at their peak of savory perfection. And these new RCA Estate ranges grill, bake, barbecue, and cook on the top burners all at once. And they're designed to cook automatically, to turn on even when you're out to turn off when dinner's ready. Of course, you know the name RCA stands for Leadership in Research and Engineering. So you'd expect only a range as fine as this to bear the RCA name. And what marvelous features go with it. The barbecue or meat oven for charcoal done flavor. The hideaway grid all for top of range grilling. The big balanced heat bake oven. Dependable performance, easy operation. The new, the wonderful, the sensational RCA estate gas and electric ranges. At your dealers now. This is Phil again It's sure nice being back with you folks again And oh, by the way, here's a little dope on our new time From now on, Friday is the H&H &H night on NBC With our show following that great guy, Bob Hope So tell everybody you meet that from now on Where there's Hope, there's Harris On Friday nights <laughs> Honey, say good night Good night, everybody Stop padding your part. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Included in this program transcribed was Jacqueline Fontaine. The part of Julius was played by Walter Tetley. This has been an NBC Radio Network production. RCA Victor's new 45 extended play records give you more music for less money, almost 15 minutes per record. They make the Victrola 45 phonograph a better buy than ever. It's the simplest automatic phonograph made, all play and no work. You can listen to nearly two hours of your favorite music without changing a record. Listen to the Victrola 45 phonograph with the economical new 45 EP records at your RCA Victor dealers tomorrow. <laughs> Twenty-eight means magic on the fourth by NBC. <laughs>